Do you feel existentially lost? There are few things scarier than going through life, wondering what you came to this earth for. It's like trying to find your way through an endless ocean without a map. When we feel purposeless, every day becomes a minefield of uncertainty and aimlessness. How can we set goals if we don't know what our goals are supposed to be? Are our desires in line with our purpose or working against it? What's the point of pursuing our passions if they have no meaning? If we have no purpose, if there's no real reason for us to be who we are, then maybe we are just truly alone. Well, I'm here to bring you some good news. You do have a purpose, and I'm about to tell you what it is. What do you think of when you think of purpose? If you're anything like me, I bet you equate purpose with your career or vocation. For example, if my purpose is to help people, then it makes sense for me to become a doctor or a social worker. If my purpose is to experience pleasure and be popular, then I should do my best to become rich and famous. If I'm meant to be creative, I should become an artiste. If I want my purpose to be family, then I should devote myself to being a wife, mother, the list goes on and on. But when we think like this, we've actually confused cause and effect. Your identity is not your purpose. Identity is like a set of hats you keep in your closet and you switch them out depending on how you spend your time. For example, I'm a daughter, a friend, an office administrator, a woman in society, a South Asian, a heterosexual, so on and so forth. But when I put on any of those hats, they're just roles I play. They aren't who I actually am. And so it doesn't make sense to base my purpose on what hat I wear. My hats can get lost, or dirty, or stolen, or damaged. If I'm wearing the hat of my job, I can get fired, or laid off, or promoted, or demoted. I can get a raise, or not. If I'm wearing the hat of being a daughter, that can change too. When my parents pass away, I will put this hat away. When I fight with my parents, I don't like this hat very much, and I also tend to put it away. Do you see how in the grand scheme of things, the hats of our identity come and go, and really have nothing to do with our true essence? Our souls may enjoy wearing all these hats, but at the end of the day, they're just hats. Furthermore, if you believe in reincarnation, guess what? Your identity changes with every lifetime, right? If we place our value and purpose in something as fragile as identity, no wonder we feel like any setback can set off an avalanche of disaster in our lives. Identity is tied to life circumstances, and we all know that those can change on a dime. So it doesn't really make sense for us to define our purpose by the hats or the masks we choose to wear at any given time. So let's fix cause and effect. We think our purpose gives us our identity. But in fact, there's something else that gives us purpose, which then leads to us choosing our identity. In truth, your identity is actually an expression of something bigger. Our true purpose is defined by a point of singularity that is everlasting, invincible, and guaranteed to be successful. Your real purpose will never change, even through multiple lifetimes, and that is why it can be a true anchor in the ocean of life. You can plant your flag, knowing that the heavens will descend upon you to help you with your purpose, because it's so clear and divinely supported. Okay. Ready to hear what it is? No matter who you are, where you're from, what you've been through, or where you're going, your purpose is to spread love. How you spread love is completely up to you, and that is where you get to decide what you want to do, what roles you want to take on, etc. Why does this work? Because you are love. You are love as both a noun and a verb. There is no difference. When you are something, then expanding yourself is not only your destiny, it's your natural state of being. This is how God created you, and if you were to meet with your soul, that's exactly what it would tell you. You are simply an extension of love, and all the pain we see in the world is a resistance of this truth. This resistance is what we call fear. Fear is the opposite of love. Whether it shows up in your life as anger or despair or isolation, Fear is so damaging and feels so terrible because it is a form of denial of who you are. It's like seeing your reflection in a mirror and refusing to believe that you can look as good as you do because you believe it's just not possible, even though the mirror is showing you objective reality. Fear, also known as the ego, has one job, to convince you that you are not actually love incarnate and therefore you need to find some other purpose. If you'd like to learn more about the function of the ego, please check out my video on special relationships. If you're feeling resistance with the idea that you are love and only love, I'd also like to suggest my video on the unconditional love of God. Because in the same way fear is known as the ego, 
divine love and God are synonymous. They are the same thing. If we think of God as all-powerful, all-knowing, and invincible, then we are also describing love. Fear has tried to tarnish the image of God by painting him as someone who can also hold anger, disappointment, and punishment within him. But it's just not true. The punishing judgmental God is a product of fear. But where there is love, there can be no fear. They are mutually exclusive opposites. So how can you embrace your purpose of being and spreading love? It's quite easy because it's your nature to do so. Choose love in everything you do. Smile at the cashier when you're at the grocery store. Tell your brother how much you adore him, even if he annoys you. Laugh with your friends. These are all expressions of love. Sure, you can be a doctor and heal people. That's one way to express love. Or maybe you can create a beautiful painting that inspires others. That is yet another example of expressing love. The myriad of ways we can spread love is infinite because love is infinite. And best of all, if you don't know what you want to do with your life, you're still in luck because you are an expression of love just by being you. You are literally the embodiment of love. So you are already fulfilling your purpose just by existing, just by breathing and sitting on your couch. You are still expressing love. All you have to do now is acknowledge it. And this is what God wants for you too. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all encompassing can have no opposite. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So be your own style of love. Love others and create space for others to love you so that they can fulfill their purpose too. And that's it. That's your purpose. How you choose to fulfill it is completely up to you. And that's really all there is. In the words of songwriters Alicia Moore, Jonathan Scott Davis, and William Mann, famously performed by Pink, if God is a DJ, life is the dance floor, love is the rhythm, and you are the music. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time on Mediocre Guidance.